Welcome to our noon devotions here at Faith Point. I'm Pastor Steve Trewartha. <clears throat> you know, the incidents of this past week remind me of a day many years ago when I was in Bogota, Colombia, about to begin a year of missionary service. My wife Debbie and I were at a food stand and I was about to purchase a quesadilla. The next thing I knew, two authorities were at my side and I was whisked away into a trailer for further questioning. My Spanish wasn't very good at the time, but they wanted to see the other bills in my pocket. They were accusing me of trying to pass a counterfeit bill. I didn't know how that could be possible. I had just come from the Colombian bank and had received several fresh 1,000 peso bills. Thankfully, the other pesos in my pocket were not counterfeit, and after some questioning and consulting with the higher-ups, I was let go. I think I was too young or dumb to be really very scared. But I'm embarrassed to say I was upset about being out a thousand pesos and I never got my quesadilla. Our nation is reeling right now. And I'm not talking about the COVID-19 and the onslaught of change that that has brought to our lives. I'm talking about the horrific death of George Floyd that all began with the passing of a counterfeit $20 bill in a place called Cup Foods. You know, when people pass counterfeit money, they often do so without knowing it. That was my experience. At the beginning of Genesis, we are told that God breathed breath of life into Adam and into every human being who has since lived. And to watch George Floyd's life be taken away from him while on his stomach, in handcuffs, was one of the saddest deaths I've ever watched. One of the reasons it's so sad is that there was so much time to do something about it. And bystanders tried, but they were repeatedly repelled and felt helpless. I think everybody I've talked to has just shuddered over this senseless death. George Floyd should be alive today, but instead we are hurting. And it's right here in our backyard in Minneapolis. We're living in the aftermath of the tragic death of a black man that could have been prevented. From my experience of being with people in deep pain and doing grief counseling, I'm aware that people in pain have a deep need to process their anger and hurt. And it's important that they're given opportunity to do so. One of the healthy expressions of initial anger and collective pain might be to protest or march. Unfortunately, many others have turned to violence and riots and looting and retribution and negative stereotyping of law enforcement officers. These acts would be unhealthy expressions of pain and will only make the situation worse. I grieve with the family and all those who mourn the senseless death of George Floyd. But I also grieve for the senseless destruction of property, businesses, and the lives that have been lost over those who have been caught up in the aftermath of this tragedy. As I speak, I'm grateful that the violence and chaos seems to be subsiding. Just this week, I read about a group that started the night peaceful at the site of the crime. And then some decided in the group they, they wanted to create a commotion. And who knows where that would have led. But others in the group were able to convince them that the whole group needs to keep their protest peaceful. We've all seen the scary images of confrontation between police and protesters, many of them turning violent, confrontational. But there are few out there where the law enforcement authorities and protesters actually come together to embrace and show love for one another. It's one of the beautiful expressions of being a fellow human being. This is symbolic and the beginning of restoration and healing that needs to take place. You know, the past day, the past days, this pandemic swirling around us and now these protests and this senseless death. It's almost like we're living in an uncertain time like an earthquake has come upon us. But we do not stand on the ground of uncertainty. At the foot of the cross we stand on certainty. At the foot of the cross there's no profiling, no discrimination, no injustice, no place for hate and revenge, only a remedy for a sin which is ours for the taking where we embrace Christ. The Apostle Paul said, do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The way forward is to start with the good. And that starts with following Jesus. If we call ourselves a follower of Jesus, we need to exemplify the one we claim to follow. 
We can't move forward with bitterness or revenge, but instead work tirelessly for justice everywhere and for all people. We need to start with meaningful dialogue and proactive change. We need to learn again to speak the truth in love. Our fight is not against them or other people, but against Satan in his kingdom of spiritual darkness who loves to see us destroy and maim one another. Martin Luther King Jr. once wisely said, We must learn to live together as brothers, or we will perish together as fools. Have a great day, and thanks for joining our noon devotion. Let's pray. Father God, we pray for our nation, for all those who are trying to keep law and order, all those who are reeling in pain, and for those who are trying to enact change where racism and injustice still exists. May we be a part of that proactive change and renew our commitment to love one another as you first loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day and so glad you joined us.